what can you personally plant in February? I mean, it's still freezing outside. You might be surprised. Stick around. I am really excited to present this information in a way I've never done before. This video is going to allow you personally to know the exact timing for you to plant certain fruits and vegetables by seed and in the ground. I am so grateful to have viewers from all around the world. In fact, comment down below right now, where are you watching from? I try really hard to make sure that my information that I put out on this channel is not just for my area. And I try to make it relevant for everyone. Not an easy task when you consider how many climates there are. And I'm sure I fall short sometimes, but it's a goal. There are a lot of climates, but there's one sticking point that really uh, binds us all together. And that is our first and last frost dates. Now, yes, there are frost free climates. I'm close to being in one, but for the most part, we all have a first and last frost date. And so going forward, that is how I'm going to present information both on my website and on my videos so that everybody knows exactly when to plant. And I've also created a downloadable printable worksheet on my website. It's free. And I'm going to go over it in just a second to show you how it works. It's pretty simple. I highly recommend that you go over to the website and download that. It's going to be really helpful and something we're going to be working off of. So you can go to nextlevelgardening.tv. This worksheet is really going to keep you on track. And all you have to do is look at it to know your personal planting information. I think there's a thumbs up in there somewhere, right? And I'll do one for fall later on. Um, on the website, you're also going to get a link to find out your, your first and last frost date if you don't know that already, because you will need to know that information to get started with this worksheet. So to figure it out, you just take, find the crop that you're growing. And if it says you can sow your seeds eight weeks before your last frost date, just do that math. Take eight weeks off of your last frost date, count backwards, and then put it in the my date section. So for example, if you live in St. Louis, Missouri, your last average frost date is April 9th. So you want to know when to start your tomato seeds. Well, if you count back eight weeks, so you go to tomatoes and you count back six to eight weeks before April 9th. That puts you at February 12th to the 26th. That's this month. So even though it might be freezing outside, it's still time to plant your tomato seeds this month. And then you want to know when you can either transplant those seeds outdoors or buy transplants at the nursery and plant them outdoors. So we are looking for tomatoes in St. Louis, Missouri, one to two weeks after your last frost date. So your last frost date is April 9th. So that means uh, April 23rd is when you should be safe to put out your tomatoes. So by using this sheet, you're going to get the longest possible growing season out of all your crops. And that's really what we're all looking for, especially those of you in colder winter climates that have a shorter growing season. On the worksheet, I have the plants divided by color, and that just shows if they're a cool season, a warm season, or a straddling season. And that just straddling means uh, you might plant them in the cool season, like onions, grow them and harvest them in the warm season, so they, they straddle those two seasons. So I'm going to be using this personally. I really recommend you go over there and download it so you'll have some kind of advice anytime you need it for when you need to plant in your area. So let's get into the crops right now that you might be able to plant in February and I'm going to let you know how many weeks they can be started indoors before your last frost date. So I'm going to go in order of weeks. So find out your your frost date, count back, and that'll let you know where you are in this list. So if your date falls between April 18th and May 2nd, we are 10 to 12 weeks out. And that means you can start celery inside. Now, one of the reasons to grow your own celery, if you like celery, is because commercial celery, um, they treat the seeds with hormones to get them to sprout faster. 
Celery is notoriously slow to start, and so they add hormones in there to get the uh, to speed up the process. And because they, they sprout slow, a lot of people don't grow it. But if you have the patience, once it's up, it's pretty easy to grow. It does love damp soil. So this year I am trying, uh, I got some seeds for pink celery from Baker Creek, and I'm actually gonna try growing it in my bog garden because we have a very dry climate, and so I really think it's gonna like all that extra moisture. If you're 10 to 12 weeks from your last frost date, it's time to start your sweet potato slips, possibly past time. You saw, if you saw my video last week, you know that's imperative because it does take eight weeks or more to get your, to, your uh, sweet potato slips to be ready to put outside. So if you haven't done it and you wanna grow sweet potatoes, go back and watch last week's video and get right on that. All right, so now we're moving into eight to 12 weeks out, which puts us at April 4th to April 18th. One of the things that you can plant, you can start now are eggplant. Eggplant is native to India, so that should tell you what kind of climate it likes. It likes warm weather. So you aren't gonna plant them outside right now, but you can start them indoors on a heat mat and then grow them under lights, or if you have six to eight hours in a sunny window, that's fine too. But that's gonna give you a much longer growing season than waiting all that time and then starting your seeds. Because the great thing about eggplant is it produces over a long period of time. You wanna get the most out of your crop that you can, and that's how you do it. So onions is the next one. And um, it depends on where you are. If you're in a mild winter climate like I am, you know I did a video a couple of months ago planting onions. We plant in the fall and then harvest them in June or July. If you have cold winters where it freezes, then you wanna watch the ground and probably right around now or eight to 10 weeks before your last frost date, your, your ground might be thawing a bit. As soon as you can work the ground, you can get your onion seeds in. Now go back and watch that video. I'll link it down below because you do need to know what your zone is and that will tell you uh, what type of onion you need to grow. There's short day, intermediate day, and long day. Don't plant the wrong kind or you'll only get green onions and you won't get the bulb. Parsley is the next one. It's another slow uh, germinating herb, but it's one of the most useful herbs for cooking. And so if you like parsley and you want to grow it, now would be the time to start those seeds on a heat mat to get them a jump start, and then by your last frost date, you can get them out. And one thing about parsley is uh, it likes to grow a bunch of leaves and then send up a uh, flower stalk for seeds. Once that happens, the parsley's done. So once you see that starting, just that little, it'll look different coming out of the leaves, cut the entire plant almost down to the ground, and it will send out another flush of green leaves. All right, now we're moving into six to eight weeks out. That puts us, uh, if your fro last frost date is March 21st to April 3rd, you can plant artichokes. Now artichokes are a perennial, and that means you need to know what zone you're in to know how to treat them. Artichokes are hardy to zone six or seven in the United States. And if you are a zone five or lower, probably too cold for you to grow them year round. Even six to seven, uh, zone six and seven, you need to mulch them very heavily during the winter so they don't freeze. Otherwise the plant will die. Now, if you live in zones less than uh, six or seven, and maybe in six or seven just to be safe, you're gonna have to grow them as an annual, which means you plant the seed, they produce, they die but they do have a long growing season, so you gotta get them in early. If you live in five or below, I would definitely recommend getting transplants as soon as they're available at the nursery and planting them that way. But if you get your plants in the ground when you're supposed to, and according to this, you plant them in the ground on your last frost date. And if you do that, you'll get a harvest by September or October. All right, the next one is another herb, it's basil. Um, my two favorite summer dishes are pesto, and a caprese salad, and both involve basil, especially pesto, it takes a lot of basil. So I always grow tons of basil, and uh, six to eight weeks before your last frost date is when you can get those started. Basil is a great companion plant for tomatoes. So if you're growing tomatoes, plant lots of basil in and amongst them. Not only do they smell good together, it's probably my favorite summer scent, is to smell 
uh, tomato and basil in the garden together. But basil is said to actually repel a tomato worm. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but over the last three or four years when I've grown my basil with my tomatoes, I think I've only had one tomato worm. All right, the next one on my list is loofah. And I know a lot of you tried loofah for the first time this year. And uh, this was my second year growing it and it did not disappoint. Look at this harvest. I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think we have two in the house. So like 16 off of two plants. I may not even grow it this year because I don't need that many loofah. Although it is a beautiful plant, it's, it's a beautiful plant. It's got beautiful flowers. It's virtually pest resistant and it produces like crazy. One thing is though, it has a long growing season, at least a hundred days from the time you plant it to the time that it is ripe. And then it needs like another month to dry on the vine. So you gotta start them indoors six to eight weeks before your last frost date. But I tell you what, they make great sponges. You can do the dishes, exfoliate a little bit. They're awesome. And I'll put a link to a video down below on how to grow them. Now, peas is going in this category, but it's a little bit different. Six to eight weeks before your last frost date, you can actually plant peas outdoors where they're gonna grow. Peas don't like being transplanted, so that's a good thing. As soon as your ground is workable, you can pop your pea seeds in there and they'll even come right up through the snow. All right, the next one is tomatoes, the royalty of the summer garden. There are a few reasons you might wanna plant tomatoes early. Number one would be if you live in a mild climate like me and you wanna get nine to 10 months of tomato harvest, you gotta start them early. Another one would be if you live in a really hot summer climate where tomatoes around June, July, or August, because of the humidity and heat, get blight, die completely, or just stop flowering because of the heat. So you wanna get them started early so that you can get them out early and get a harvest in before the heat hits. Or you might live in a winter climate that has a short growing season and you just need to get as long of a harvest as you can into that two or three months. Another favorite of mine, is pepper. I love growing peppers and chilies. I think a lot of you do as well. Uh, peppers are heat lovers. You cannot put peppers into the ground, even as transplants, before the soil has warmed up. But peppers do tend to have several flushes of uh, peppers, fruit, throughout the season. So they'll put on a bunch, then they'll kind of slow down, then they'll put on a bunch, then they'll slow down. And so you wanna get as many flushes in as possible during your growing season. So start them early, or if you were watching me back in, when was that? September, when I said you could overwinter your peppers and you did that, then you're way ahead of the game. Put those in the ground when your soil warms up and you will have several flushes this year, even in a short uh, growing zone. Six to eight weeks before your last frost date is also time to start chitting your potatoes. Chitting your potatoes just means sprouting them. The way I do that is I put my seed potatoes on an egg crate or egg carton, put them in a sunny window for a, a few weeks and you'll start seeing sprouts. And according to our handy dandy little paperwork here, um, you put them in the ground after they're chitted, put them in the ground two to three weeks before your last frost date. They can take a little bit of frost and by that time, most of the danger should be gone and they're gonna be coming up through the ground anyway. So you'll be good there. Okay, now we're moving into four to six weeks uh, before your last frost date. So that would put us, um, if your last frost date is between March 7th and March 20th, now's the time to plant or sow your brassicas. So broccoli, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi, it's time for those now. But do you have the space and the time? Because if you put those transplants in now, especially broccoli and cauliflower, it's gonna be two to three months before they're ready to harvest. Now, if you've got plenty of space, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But if you're like me and you really have to maximize your space, um, you're still gonna have broccoli and cauliflower taking up your beds when it's time to get your summer crops into the ground. They are gonna take a couple of months to produce. So if you do it, transplants, not seeds, and you wanna make sure you're not gonna to wanna to plant anything summer-wise in those locations for the next two to three months. You can also sow greens like lettuce, 
spinach, chard. Uh, those are four to six weeks early as well. They're even frost tolerant. So uh, that's why you can actually sow them quite a bit earlier and have a harvest earlier. So now we're gonna get into the heat lovers that produce at the same time as other heat lovers like tomatoes and peppers. They just get there a lot faster. So you don't have to start them as early. So two to four weeks before your last frost date, uh, in goes the cucurbit family. Now that is all of your squash, melons, and cucumbers. Okay, we've got a couple more here that um, they're heat lovers, but they don't like to be transplanted. So you can't really even plant them until your last frost date is passed and they'll go directly into the garden. They won't be started indoors. And that is okra and corn. So two to four weeks after your last frost date, you're gonna put okra and corn directly into the garden. All right, that's my list. So head over to my website, click on frost dates and when to plant. You'll be able to download this worksheet and use it for the rest of the season. Like I said, in the fall, I will put another one together for the fall planting. If you haven't watched yesterday's Organic Gardening Basics video one, definitely make sure you do that. And I will see you on Tuesday for another quick tip. Bye-bye.